abundance beneath which rivers are flowing. Thawabam min indillah, wallahu indahu husn thawab. And Allah has the greatest thawab or reward. So I would uh, uh, let Dr. Zakir Nay, I just give you the rough translation of the ayah of Surah Ali Imran, and I want you to shed some light on that. In what sense? In a sense that, alhamdulillah, you really went through a lot, okay? But how do you feel about it? How do you feel about it, you know, comparing yourself to, for instance, Bilal ibn Rabah, Suhaib Rumi, and others and others? You know, every now and then we hear, oh, Dr. Dakir Naik is given the citizenship of whatever, and he's, he's become a Saudi citizen, <laughs> Sheikh Asim. <laughs> Will you give him the nationality? No comments. <laughs> okay, so we want to know how it is and how do you feel about it, inshallah. Please. <laughs> I would like to summarize the most of the Quran and Salim Raja to three weapons. Well, that the Yamkur Yamkur law and law held Martin, that they planned and thought it Allah to plan. And Alhamdulillah, whatever uh, the enemies of Islam are trying to plot against the Tuas and against Muslims and against Islam, Alhamdulillah, Allah is the best of planner and He plans better. And we bring Dawa in India, mashallah. We expected that it's going to come, but Alhamdulillah, Allah made us work for more than 25 years. In India, and Alhamdulillah, if you think that Allah has blessed us, you don't deserve even a small, minute percentage of it. And life here is, mashallah, much better. They try to do what they can. But Alhamdulillah, Allah has given them all the ni'mah. And now that said earlier, as far as the health is concerned, the person in physical life is concerned, it is much better. Mashallah, the iman has, has grown, Alhamdulillah. And even though they're trying their level best to put whatever they can, all the problems, and uh, they are trying to attach all the properties, etc. And, and I say to, say to my wife that, Alhamdulillah, what better can it be? Imagine if you have wealth and, and an earthquake comes and a house is destroyed, mm -hmm. or a calamity comes or someone comes and robs it, or if you, if you lose it in a business, it's your loss. What better can it be that for the sake of Allah, the property the kuffar are trying to take, they cannot be any better ajar than that. Mm -hmm. There cannot be any better way that our our wealth can be used, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our effort. But uh, we as uh, Dai should keep on continuing striving harder and harder. Yeah. Main thing Allah checks uh, is the striving, results are in the hands of Allah. So whatever we do, has a bin yeah. fatal. The result is not in our hands at all, in our, uh, in our hands is striving. No. So we as Muslims, we as Dai should continue striving irrespective however much the plot. And Iman should go stronger and it has Alhamdulillah. And MashaAllah, Allah has been very kind that compared to the other Muslims in the world, Allah has yes put us in a much better situation, MashaAllah. When you look at the Muslims around us, you see that thousands, tens of thousands, millions are in a much worse situation than us. Yeah. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Lay not on us a burden greater than we can bear. And that is the last verse uh, in the Quran of Surah Bakhra. And we know that Allah does not lay a burden on us greater than we can bear. And that's the verse of the Quran. So we only pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may He continue accepting effort and may He continue keeping and us in the way where we can try for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Dr. Dakar, subhanAllah, uh, in the light of the ayah that we quoted earlier, wa udu fi sabili. You know, if we just find it so easy that we travel in first class or business class and we're checking in five star hotels and we're living in. Uh, oh, Assalamu alaikum, Oops. Oops. Bismillah. This is the entrance to the bank. So. One questions himself, you know, what, what is going on? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam traveled on foot 60 miles from us. He traveled on foot. And what happened? Ah, hello, hello. 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 Hello, the Prophet وسلم, was, as Allah described in Surah Al Anbiya, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you, but as mercy for everything that exists. Wallahi, His mercy even to the non believers. Yet, they received them with the stones. 
They throw stones at him. They cast stones at him. He bled sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if he, the most beloved to Allah, the dearest and the greatest of all creation, suffer that much, then if you're banned from entering your own country, if your passport is confiscated, if whatever happens, that is very low compared to what happened to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you, do you ever feel any sorrow or grief? Do you feel like, oh man, what put me in that situation? Why did I have to do that to myself? Do you, do you feel that? There were questions asked by me, by the press and some of the Muslim friends, that Zakir Naik, do you regret doing something that has made you in this situation? I said, Alhamdulillah, if I had opportunity, I would have done more dawah than what I did. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And Allah has really blessed us, and I feel I'm one of the most blessed persons that Allah has given us opportunity to work in His way, and we don't give up. It's Alhamdulillah. And I'm just continuing striving. You know, Dr. Zakir, you're a medical doctor by profession. So when a baby, when the fetus is in the womb of his mother or her mother, he is given a source of provision, one source of provision, which is the umbilical cord, right? The baby in the womb of his or her mother, they think that this is the vast universe. They don't see anything beyond it. And they feel that they're safe heaven. But when they come out, Allah provides them with double sources where they get the milk from both breasts, subhanAllah, fresh, nutritive. And then they think, that's it, this is a safe heaven. But at one point, there must be weaning. And then the child will be able to eat and drink from variety of food and drink. And Allah said, Sometimes the person is, is having short-sightedness. And he's like, you know, I don't want to say the term like grass eaters. They only look beneath their feet. They say, yeah, where is the smell of the grass? Again, again grass. What is with the grass? I can do something with vegetations, fruit. <laughs> Just wanted to give uh... a... <laughs> First and uh, re-go again. First, first thing. This is Welcome back. Sorry for the interruption. I think I pressed the. Uh, uh, cancel uh, bomb by mistake. Grass. It was all your fault, Sheikh Hassan. <laughs> we keep talking about the grass. <laughs> so we just wanted to greet uh, uh, Sheikh Jamaan. Yeah, marhaba. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah. Welcome to uh, this nice gathering. You Mastaka. are welcome in KLA. KLA? KLA. What's your name? Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> okay. Uh, subhanallah. Sorry for the interruption. So we we're talking about the sacrifices that a da'i would eventually have to offer for Allah's sake. The thing is, whenever uh, you know one of us goes through some struggle, like if you're held at any airport for five hours, six hours, or even twelve hours. And then you're asked to uh, take a hike, get back to where you come from. Oh, but I've been flying for the past 24 hours and uh, I'm here to give a lecture now. You're, we're not interested. So how do we actually feel about it? Do we feel like, you know, very bitter taste? Do we feel like we're oppressed? Or do we feel, well, I have made an attempt, I've tried, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَلَّيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى we're only asked to make an effort, to strike. Go ahead. All right, as you guys did that in earlier, our job is to strike. And Allah says, I'm going to correct you, I'm going to correct you, I'm the message, giving you that in the name of Allah. Now, so we as that, you should do our best striving in the way of Allah, as for the Quran and Sunnah, and leave the results for Allah. Now, and that's what we pray to Allah, that maybe continue striving until our last breath. And maybe try and spread the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala last breath. And may uh, Iman increase. Yeah. And as I believe that uh, the more uh, more difficult is the test, higher the reward. And as the Prophet said, that all the Ambiyas of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their test was the hardest. 
compared to that, we are nothing. Yeah. So we pray to Allah that, but we say that, lay not on another body. Yeah. So okay. if the test is higher, and, and if Allah makes us pass, inshallah, we expect a higher order. Wait a minute. So you mean that if you're tested, this is not necessarily a sign that Allah is punishing you, Allah isn't happy with you, rather it could mean the opposite in the light of the hadith that the Prophet sallallahu said, أشد الناس بلاء الأنبياء the most severely tested people are the prophets so he loved them he tested them more than others yeah. Allah clearly says in the Quran that no one can go to Jannah without being tested mm. the question is when a calamity comes on someone it can be because of two reasons mm. one can be that he's on the wrong path and Allah is giving us up or it can be he's on the right path and Allah is testing him and giving him a higher test so that he gives him a higher reward Jannah may be Jannah for those so any calamity is because of two reasons we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever difficulty we are, we are facing in life is because of the second category. That okay. Allah thinks that He wants to give us a better reward, He's putting us in a bigger test, and maybe pass it. If, you know, you just go with yourself. You opened up another serious question, which is, I believe on behalf of all the viewers, and once again, I, I do apologize for finishing the previous live broadcast accidentally. I hope the viewers will still catch up with us, inshallah. So on behalf of all the viewers, I would ask this question. And how would you figure out or distinguish whether the test or the calamity is a matter of test or a means of punishment? If we are on the path of Quran and Sunnah, that we are following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not breaking law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, following the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, rest assured we are on the street. Irrespective of what the calamity. If we are breaking the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're not following the Quran, we are doing all the harams or the habira, then even if you are getting a benefit and a pleasure in the world, you think it is your azar actually. Mm. Even you may be staying in a palace, you may be the richest man in the world, and you are breaking the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be assured that this is azar for you. Mm. And Allah says Allah tells the people with wealth, mm. the children, by all the latest. Mm. So if a calamity befalls on you, you should you should always analyze that is your life according to Quran. Mm. If it is, rest assured, whatever the world says, mm. you're on the straight path. So if it is not, then there is called istidraj. As Allah said in the Quran, سَنَسْتَدِرِجُهُمْ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ So he may give extra and gives respite, he gives wealth, health, and plenty of authority. So people are indulged in a major sense. This is not a sign that Allah is happy with them. It's, it's, it's a matter of istidraj, it's really, really dangerous. You know, Dr. Zakir, um, again, uh, as a doctor by profession, as an MD, normally, and through our experience, and this is something that is very uh, observed and not noticeable, which is uh, a successful engineer wants his sons or his children to be engineers like him so that they would inherit the office and the, the business and obviously a doctor would like his children to be all doctors a dentist likewise a lawyer likewise but why would a da'iyah a caller to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sheikh asim prepare yourself i'm going to ask you a question what is the difference between a da'i and a da'iyah okay it has nothing to do with masculine and feminine <laughs> not everything we talk about is muscles sheikh asim okay <laughs> so, um, why would a da'i who has been through Allah, has been stopped at the airports, has been banned from giving talks, stopping from giving lectures, he's, maybe his assets are being frozen, uh, you know, some agencies are trying to assassinate his personality, discredit his credibility. Why would any person on earth, after going through this lot of hassle, would still desire and pray day and night to have not one of his children, not only the boys, rather all his children to be in the same field of da'wah. Please enlighten us. I do agree with you that most of the people have you said that the engineer would like his son to be an engineer or daughter to be an engineer, a doctor would like the uh, son to be a doctor, a businessman, the son to be a businessman, but I'm not agreeing that this is always right. Mm. Uh, I was a doctor, mm. and I became a doctor, I chose the profession to be, it was a dead profession, so the humanity, and I found a better profession, as Allah says in the Quran, it's a chapter 41, verse 
الذي ضمن أحسن قال من ربي وربنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. Who is better speed than one who invites to the way of the Lord? He was righteous and said that I was right. When I found a better profession, I gave up the profession of becoming a doctor. Yes, my parents wanted me to become a doctor. Like you are a doctor, medical doctor. No, no. Besides being a medical doctor, you are a heart doctor. A cardiologist in a sense of treating the hearts. I'm. You can say I'm a doctor. I've changed from a doctor of body to doctor of soul. Fantastic. Beautiful. So then, then we realized. I remember my mother. You know, she wanted me to become like a heart specialist, like Prince Bana. Prince Bana was the first doctor in the world, heart specialist, who did the heart. So she wanted you to be a cardiologist. Yes, she wanted me somewhat like Prince Bana, who was in Saudi. So when I met Sheikh Hamid Dilad and I got involved in the field of Dawa, then I asked her when I started my Dawa, that would you want to become a doctor, like Prince Bana, or like Sheikh Dilad? So she being intelligent, she said both. Wallahi, she's really intelligent. Later on, when we got into the field and became a full-time guy after a few years, I asked her, that would you want me to become like Sheikh Zidat or the Prince Bana? She said, I can sacrifice a thousand Prince Bana for my life. Allahu Akbar, MashaAllah. So she realized that it's a better profession. MashaAllah. And coming back to your question that, after getting so much of trials and tribulations and difficulties in life, would you want one of your children to become a Qatai? I would say I would want 100%. All my children. Allah, hundred percent. Allah, because whenever there are trials and tribulation, and we look into your life that you are on correct Quran and Sunnah, that means Alhamdulillah, Allah is accepting your work. Don't look at the results. You have to look at them on the Quran and Sunnah. And when trials and tribulation are coming, Allah wants to give you higher. Mm. And I would want my children to get higher reward than mm. that. The reason we don't only do dua that may our children can die. Despite all the struggle, despite all the obstacles and the harassment and the personality assassination, so you know, normally a person would like for his children to be better than him, not to go through the hassle. And we know in advance that if you were to give da'wah, then you gotta face those challenges. So despite all of that, you still wanted them to be uh, du'a. For example, if you take an examination, a group of examination, when you just study for the examination, a few hours or a few days before you are struggling, it's a difficult time, but the moment you pass, then you get a degree, maybe a bachelor's degree in arts or science. More difficult the test, higher the reward. Mm. When you apply, when you appear for a medical examination, which is one of the most difficult in the academic examination, mm. once you pass, you get a doctor. Mm. In front of you, you get more respect. Correct. But before the examination, it is more difficulty, bigger test. And you fear that you may fail. So there is a price for everything. Price. So similarly, higher the test, greater the reward. So I don't only pray that my children become guys. I do pray, but I also pray that may they become mujaddid. Mujaddid. You know, after the Prophet, Allah there's no Prophet that will come yeah. next to mujaddid. Then we pray that may our children become shape of Islam. You know, like in Bethany, you know, that Adhadi fail. Yeah. Every 100 years there will be but in return, then it talks about which of us are informed to the Ummah. So I pray that, you know, they be multiple them better than me. We are nothing, we are just respect, you know, and may Allah accept that for And I always tell my children that whatever time you get, whatever knowledge you get, all this is sifar, it's zero. Allah Akbar. Number one is Allah's hand. Allah Akbar. If Allah helps you, then you can work on it. If Allah forsakes you, who will there, then you can do it. So let the believers put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then my chapter 3 was Quran right here. So I always tell my children, though they are doing the Sharia, they are doing the Islamic study, I said all this is good, but number one is you should try and learn the art of how to get Allah's help. Allah. And the only way that art is, it's an open secret, you follow the Quran and Sunnah. The more you follow the Quran and Sunnah, the more you sacrifice, more will the help of Allah come. And believe me, more the trials and tribulations that you have, more will you be at peace at heart and mind. I am more peaceful now in heart and mind as compared to what I was few years before. Shaykh, you know, subhanAllah, all what you've been saying right now is referred to in Surah Al-Furqan. Allah has guided us, obviously, the elite. They say that the elite, Ibad al-Rahman, they constantly invoke Allah with this very unique supplication. They say, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبَلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنٍ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا So those who constantly invoke Allah, and this is some sort of inspiration Allah is guiding us as what to do. They invoke Allah, رَبَّنَا أَوَلُّونَ هَبَلَنَا 
to grant us from our spouses and our offspring comfort for our eyes, peace for our minds. وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Do not just make us righteous, rather make us imam لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Make us leaders, what you just say that, you know, you're aiming high, you're really aiming high. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ said. Do not sit there for, you know, he said whenever you ask Allah for paradise, don't say, oh Allah, just take me to heaven. Ask him for al-firdaws al-a'la, aim high. So, وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا You're so right. I mean, I just learned and listen from you. Because I keep telling my children that I want you to be whatever, doctor, engineer, whatever, but number one, dua to Allah. But now, not just dua, reformers, mujaddid. But there is only one mujaddid every 100 years. We pray to Allah, <laughs> we let Allah choose. <laughs> she added the thing that, you know, uh, we, always, we always say, that if I pray to Allah, if my prayer is answered, Answer, I'm happy. Allah. If my prayer is not answered, I'm ten times happy. It's because answered the first, either way. So if it's not answered, I'm ten times happy because it's the same. first was my choice, the second oh. was Allah's choice. Yeah. Yeah. So we just and we can ask for the sky. Yeah. Even a shoe string, you can ask for Allah. So even from the sky, so let aim the highest, like you rightly said. We pray that we, we and our family, get generous with those awala and add to it. May we see the face of Allah as often as possible. Yeah. So add to it. In the company of Muhammad Sallallahu So I say Jannatul Al Al Ula in the company of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Ambiya Dal Kul Farashidi and seeing the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as often as possible. So actually the more your knowledge increases, mm. then your vision increases. Correct. You know, so it opens the thing, up your mind. Yes, and then I mean the dua that I used to do maybe twenty years back or this way. The dua did I did 10 years back is different. The dua I did 2 years back is different. Now it is different. Mm. Initially it was only, you know, maybe go for Jannah. And knowledge keeps on increasing. We try and, you know, like you rightly said previously, I have to only ask that make my children become die. Yeah. And then Alhamdulillah. Subhanallah, uh, you know, some of the viewers are asking about the Mujaddid. L- let me give you an example. And since you've mentioned Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on him. You know, he suffered like one of the most of those who suffer for Allah's sake from the dua and the scholars even when he was in prison he converted the suffering into joy and delight he drove his enemies literally crazy he said what my enemies could do to me could harm me by any means of course not what he said is subhanallah whenever they throw me in prison thank you so much finally I have some privacy you know uh, Asim al-Hakim al masaf this morning while having breakfast or chatting and said that he loves to spend time by himself. I'm an outgoing person. I like to go hiking. I like to go. He likes to be in tennis table indoor. Okay. So Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said even in prison this is some sort of privacy. Uh, and exactly contemplation and khalwa uh, even if was come to worse according to them. If they execute me, if they hang me, if they kill me, if they poison me, this is a matter of them. I die as a shaheed. Uh, if they kick me out of the country and say, you're not wanted here, sir, we're taking your passport away, and you're wanted everywhere. He, he converted the suffering into the life. He said, siyaha. I'm, you know, mashallah, I, I believe you are in a much better place. And allow me in a little bit, inshallah, we will show the viewers where you stay in and what, you know. The Jannah, the Jannah is in the believer's heart. This is what we say. A mujaddid, brothers and sisters, is a person who doesn't keep, just teach and give da'wah. No. A person who revives the Ummah. The Ummah is currently, you can say, semi dead. Am I exaggerating if I say that? Huh? Paralyzed. Paralyzed. So when a uh, few days ago uh, Trump announced the Jolan Heights as you know belong to Israel, and you hear no sound whatsoever. This is like a state of paralysis. Then before that, when Jerusalem was announced as a capital of you know the occupation forces, I don't call it a state. Okay. Then uh, a complete paralysis. But among the believers, 
those whose hearts are worried about that, they're young right now, it could be your son, it could be one of our sons, insha'Allah, one day, insha'Allah, there will be a mujaddid as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said. But Shaykh, let's get into real business. Your business is da'wah, our business is da'wah. And alhamdulillah, wa shukurullah, brothers and sisters, we suffer not the least, alhamdulillah. Wallahi, we feel no suffering. Anything happens, Allahu wa ma sha'a fa'al. We feel blessed. So how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala convert that suffering and pain into delight, into joy, into pleasure? Radhi Allahu anhu wa radu anhu. I remember Shaykh Dilat, may Allah have mercy on him, on his soul, Allahumma ameen. May Allah make his grave a garden of paradise. Your teacher and our teacher, whenever he traveled across the world, and whenever he invited the biggest um, you know, priests, rabbis, and cetera for uh, debates, and he challenged them. And these debates were so powerful. Now they don't want this to happen anymore. They don't want another Ahmadi that. They don't want that connect to be traveling across the world and convincing the followers of other faith, hey, you guys are not actually following the truth. You know, there is only one God and monotheism means to worship only one ilah. And what you believe in is not monotheism. It is definitely polytheism. So you prove, and Sheikh Ahmad did that, before you have proved that Islam wasn't spread by the sword. Rather, it was spread by the word. While the ummah is in its weakest conditions, but Islam is announced to be the fastest growing religion across the globe by the grace of Allah. We see that firsthand, Shaykh Bek. So do you think that these guys are stopping you and stopping the dua, and again, it's the popular dua, and the effective dua, because they see that they have a great impact and influence on people leaving, you know, whatever they believe in and coming to the truth. You know, again, what I'm talking about is that the opposition that you're facing I believe it is simply because of your influence, because of the way that you're convincing people to come to Islam. If people were fair to us, they say, Zakir, you know, your statement is fake. Let's make a debate. So the Pope would come forward and say, you know what? The Vatican Pope would say, Zakir Nari, you're all wrong, and I'm willing to debate you <laughs> and to challenge you publicly because they actually refused to debate Sheikh Ahmad that repeatedly. Would they come one day and say, uh, you know, Zakir, let's come to a common ground and have a public debate and it will be aired on the sea and, and on Fox News and, and all I wish that they come. <laughs> and why wouldn't it come? Why do you think it will never come? Uh, these people who are enemies of Islam, they are afraid of the truth. And when you ask me the question that uh, are they against the people accepting or because of the popularity they have, I would say that these people are afraid of those people who have been the All success is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I feel that though we don't deserve it, Allah has been very kind uh, and it has been fazil up it all because of the of the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Almighty. Mm. So when they see that the message of Allah is so effective and when they say that they are against terrorism, when they find that the Dai is able to prove that Islam is not a religion of terrorism, they want to lay the allegation that the Dai is a terrorist, mm. so that they could stop the spread of the message. Mm. But Alhamdulillah, Summa Alhamdulillah, I personally say that I thank the government of India and, and I thank the Prime Minister of India, Modi, for, for two reasons. Really? Number one, that you know, he oh, has spent maybe hundreds of millions of dollars in the media to the allegation. Yeah. And uh, those people who have heard me and have given heard one or two of my full lectures, I'm sure that they agree that this is all fake news. Mm. Maybe previously about maybe about you know two thirds of the Muslim Hindi, maybe about ten percent of the non-Muslim of India. After this, mashallah, more than ninety-five percent of the Muslims know me. More than eighty percent of the non-Muslim in India know me. Alhamdulillah. And. Those who know me and have seen my video are surely giving to us to me that may Allah, may Allah support and make him. Mm -hmm. May Allah accept dua. 
those who have not heard me at all, that's the vast majority, looking at the media like a normal innocent viewer would think I'm a terrorist. Mm. And many of them may be abusing me, maybe cursing me. That reminds me of a, of a scholar who had told that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created a particular sect mm. for the Umar radiallahu one to curse him and then he gives sawab. So when people pray for me, I give sawab. Mm. People curse me falsely, that gets me no sawab. Subhanallah. All my, all the good deeds of the person come true. If that is exhausted, my bad deeds go through. So I'm praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it is win win in both the situation. So Alhamdulillah, I believe that whatever work I did for the last more than 25 years, uh -huh. after uh, Bodhi and after Indian government led the allegation of terrorism against me, I knew that there would be problems in India. Never in my dream I thought that I would be labeled as a terrorist because um, I'm quite upfront, I'm one of the persons who have gone and spoken against conflicts against terrorism uh -huh. in different parts of the world. Uh -huh. How could they lay that allegation? You know, what, what, what is really weird and strange, a person who walks in with seven semi-automatic machine guns and he kills worshippers while they're bound down and prostrating themselves. An older uncle who says, welcome brother, he gets a shot, he gets shot in the chest, three bullets. A child, three years old, he smiles to the perpetrators, to the terrorists, and he shoots him in the brains and he kills him. And he kills men and women, even handicapped people. He has no mercy whatsoever. And the world is not pronouncing him as a terrorist. And psychomatic is. So what kind of machine gun do you use? It is, it is, I would say it is, uh, as Thomas Carlyle like said, it is the sword, sword of the truth. So it is maybe, and this conquers the heart smoke. Yeah. So I believe that, alhamdulillah, now my message is heard more. And, and, and it's the last one of that who gets a video. And the Indian government, you know, previously I would say that, okay, we could get some justice now after this government come into power, the chances of getting justice in the court of law mm. have become minimal. But Alhamdulillah, when the government want to attach all my properties, a non-Muslim judge, I don't know him, mm. a Sikh, mm. he was out of his way and he says in the court that get me, I have seen Allah hundreds Allah. of his lectures, mm. get me only one statement against terrorism and I'll allow you to attach his property. And they could not, so not even one statement, he refused. But that doesn't come in the media. What it, so the thing is, they are spending millions and millions of dollars to try and malign me. But whatever they're doing, Allah is the best of plan. If they plan and plot, Allah plans it better. And as you ask me, you know, Alhamdulillah, after this onslaught uh, on me, mashallah, there are more than uh, 10 countries in the world, Muslim, non Muslim, offering me comments today. And I feel that, mashallah, today I think the situation of Muslim. But you don't have the Saudi citizenship. <laughs> I'm a citizen of India, yes, mashallah. Alhamdulillah wa shukr. And go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, no, please, please. And, and I believe today, mashallah, seeing the situation that is there of the of Muslim countries around the world, I would say that the best of the worst Muslim countries today in the world for a Muslim to live in Malaysia. Mashallah. And mashallah. the best city to live is Mashallah. Mashallah, city, beautiful, alhamdulillah. So after my survey, what I did in traveling different parts of the world, and you know there are various turmoil. Yeah, this is a free advertisement, <laughs> You should shout for that. <laughs> Mashallah, indeed, it's uh, it's one of the most beautiful places, and the people here are very sweet. Uh, they're very very kind. Sheikh, what is the biggest number of audience you have ever had? I remember in India, like you know, at one point, at one point in in Dubai we had about fifty five thousand all at once. In India, what is the biggest number of audience you had under the same roof? The largest audience was in Kishan and more than a million of them. Allahu Akbar. And it's Masha all because of Allah. Yeah. And that time, you know, we feel that Allah, Allah is testing us and now our test is difficult. That may He, may the Shaitan not come into our way. Mm. And we to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may accept. You know, I, I, I don't consider myself in the knowledge there are millions of Muslims who are more than me. They are better than me, everything. It is only Hazrat and Fasir. Alhamdulillah. Okay, let me share with you the good news, which you already know, but also to assure the viewers. Subhanallah, in order to gather a half million or one million audience in one place, Eric requires a huge effort. It takes a whole year-round preparation, and it costs tons of money, subhanallah. 
and there is always a big danger and a great risk because one million audience you have to have seats for a million audience can you imagine okay they stop that from happening now Allah has given you a replacement what you have instead of one million tens of millions hundreds of millions subhanallah now with a single handset a phone like that your life mashallah you see currently how many people are watching currently and overnight it will cross a million by the grace of allah at zero cost i'm only using your wi-fi for you <laughs> <laughs> so at zero cost by the grace of allah whenever a door is closed brothers and sisters allah opens multiple doors whenever a person sacrifices anything for allah's sake allah gives him better than what he sacrificed for his sake you know wallahi wallahi the biggest concern should be maintaining the fastness until we meet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we die in this condition otherwise there have been a lot of people who are dua who are even scholars at al-azhar or here or there big institutes and subhanallah they give up on all of that they just simply handed over their deed to the shaitan and they have become dua of the shaitan may allah god as well as best so we want to share with the viewers that really we're not worried about the da'wah i personally and i'm pretty certain that you too and jibreel are you worried about the spirit of islam Alhamdulillah. Huh? It will spread with or without us exactly with or without us allah yeah. said it in the quran you have two references i'm gonna test your memory check <laughs> one in surah tawbah and one in surah asaf and the other ayah we read on a lot of you on or Allah be a way so they they do and they try their best for out the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but Allah has promised and has vowed that he will fulfill his life he will spread his deal even though the kuffar and the non-believers not just they hate it they spend all the wealth in the world to stop it but it is unstoppable because it is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're not worried about the spirit of the deen, brothers and sisters. It's just an honor for any of us to be a part of that. What we're worried about, even Dr. Dakar Naim, this icon, what he's worried about, <laughs> what, we're, what we're worried about is maintaining steadfastness and thabat until we die in a state of belief the most frequently recited dua by Prophet Muhammad according to the hadith of Ummu Salama Ya Muqallib Al-Qulub Thabbit Qalbi Ala Deen So just shed some light on that then I will give you a break inshaAllah Coming back to earlier what Allah said in the Quran in Surah Tawbah chapter 9 verse 30 Surah Saf chapter 61 verse 9 that Allah sent his messenger with the religion of truth so that he can reveal over all the other religions however much the mushrikin don't like it however much the, those who worship the idol do not like it so this is a promise for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he make you deen prevail it's a promise Allah does not require you and me the rubbish that we are the deen is going to prevail. Mm. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He make us instrumental. Allah doesn't require us. You know, Allah can create a million of duas, a million than better than us. He can create a million peace TV, a million than better than peace TV, just in a fraction of a second. It's mm. easy. Mm. We pray to Allah that may He make us instrumental in making it easy. His deen is going to prevail for sure, without doubt. So we only pray to Allah that the deen is going to prevail and may utilize us and keep us steadfast on the straight path. And as Allah says in the man, chapter number three, verse number eight, that Rabbana Allah says, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, you can That, O oh Lord, after you apply it, keep us straight. Yeah. And may you love us. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we always keep on praying that may we come closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the test get difficult, no problem. See to us that we pass the test. Yeah. That's most important. And and always remember that it is only because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. 
not even 0.0001 percent is because of our effort. Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala who accepts the effort and He converts it into result. Yeah. And result is not the test. Gardens beneath which rivers are flowing. Thawabam min indi Allah, wallahu indahu husn thawab. And Allah has the greatest thawab of the world. So I would uh, uh, let Dr. Zakir May, I just give you the rough translation of the ayah of Surah Al Imran, and I want you to shed some light on that. In what sense? In a sense that Alhamdulillah, you really went through a lot, okay? But how do you feel about it? How do you feel about it, you know, comparing yourself to, for instance, Bilal ibn Rabah, Suhaib al Rumi, and others and others? You know, every now and then we hear, oh, Dr. Zakir Naik is given the citizenship of whatever, and he's, he, he's become a Saudi citizen. <laughs> Sheikh Asim. <laughs> really gave him the nationality? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> okay, so we want to know how it is and how do you feel about it, inshallah. Please. I would like to just summarize in the voice of the Quran, so I'm going to to speak with him. That they plan and what did Allah plan? And Alhamdulillah, whatever uh, the enemies of Islam are trying to plot against the Tuas and against Muslims and against Islam, Alhamdulillah, Allah is the best of planner and He plans better. And we bring Dawah in India, mashallah. We expected that it's going to come, but Alhamdulillah, Allah made us work for more than 25 years in India. And Alhamdulillah, if you think that Allah has blessed us. You don't deserve even a small, minute percentage of it. And life here is, mashallah, much better. They try to do what they can. But Alhamdulillah, Allah has given them all the ni'mah. And now that I said earlier, as far as the health is concerned, the person's physical life is concerned, it is much better. Mashallah, the iman has, has grown, Alhamdulillah. And even though they're trying their level best to put whatever they can, all the problems, and uh, they are trying to attach all the properties, etc. And, and I say to, say to my wife that, Alhamdulillah, what better can it be? Imagine if you have wealth and, and an earthquake comes and a house is destroyed, mm -hmm. or a calamity comes or someone comes and robs it, or if you, if you lose it in a business, it's your loss. What better can it be that for the sake of Allah, the property, the kuffar are trying to take, they cannot be any better ajar than that. Mm -hmm. They cannot be any better way that our, our wealth can be utilized. Yeah. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our effort. But uh, we as uh, Dai should keep on continuing striving harder and harder. Yeah. Main thing Allah checks uh, is the striving, the results are in the hands of Allah. So whatever we do, Hazar means for yeah. The result is not in our hands at all, in, a, uh, in our hands is striving. Yeah. So we as Muslims, we as Dai should continue striving irrespective however much the plot. And our Iman should go stronger, and it has, Alhamdulillah. And mashallah, Allah has been very kind that compared to the other Muslims in the world, Allah has just put us in a much better situation, mashallah. When you look at the Muslims around us, you see that thousands, tens of thousands, millions are in a much worse situation than us. Yeah. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that lay not on us a burden greater than we can bear. And that is the last verse uh, in the Quran of Surah Bakra. And we know that Allah does not lay a burden on us greater than we can bear, and that's the verse of the Quran. So we only pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may He continue accepting effort, and may He continue keeping and us in the way where we can pray for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Dr. Dhaqr, subhanAllah, uh, in the light of the ayah that we quoted earlier, وَأُوذُوا فِي سَبِيلِ You know, if we just find it so easy that we travel in first class or business class and we're chicken in five-star hotels and we're living in the... Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Oops. Oops. This is an entrance to the bank. So, one questions himself, you know, what, what is going on? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam traveled on foot 60 miles from Iraq. And what happened? Ah, hanan, 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 ah, وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين. We have not sent you 
but as mercy for everything that exists. Wallahi, his mercy even to the non-believers. Yet, they receive them with the stones. They throw stones at him. They cast stones at him. He bled sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if he, the most beloved to Allah, the dearest, the greatest of all creation, suffer that much, then if you're banned from entering your own country, if your passport is confiscated, if whatever happens, that is very low compared to what happened to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you, do you ever feel any sorrow or grief? Do you feel like, oh man, what put me in that situation? Why did I have to do that to myself? Do you, do you feel that? There were questions asked by me, by the press and some of the Muslim friends, that Zakir Naik, do you regret doing something that I made with the situation? I said, Alhamdulillah, if I had a portion of I would have done more dawa than what I did before. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And Allah has really blessed us, and I feel I'm one of the most blessed persons that Allah has given us the opportunity to work in His way, and we don't give up. It's Alhamdulillah. And I'm just continuing striving. You know, Dr. Becker, you're a medical doctor by profession. So when a baby, when the fetus is in the womb of his mother or her mother, he is given a source of provision, one source of provision, which is the umbilical cord, right? The baby in the womb of his or her mother, they think that this is the vast universe. They don't see anything beyond it. And they feel that their safe heaven. But when they come out, Allah provides them with double sources where they get the milk from both breasts, subhanAllah, fresh, nutritive. And then they think, that's it, this is a safe heaven. But at one point, there must be weaning. And then the child would be able to eat and drink from variety of food and drink. And Allah said, Sometimes the person is, is having short-sightedness. And he's like, you know, I don't want to say the term like grass eaters. They only look beneath their feet. They say, where is the smell of the grass? I can't, I can't grass. What is with the grass? I can do something with vegetations, fruit. <laughs> Just wanted to give uh, a... <laughs> Taste and uh, re-go again. Post, post, post. Is that Ayn Ba'ad al-Nas? Ayn Ba'ad al-Nas. The Ma'ad al mashallah. Subhanallah. My son is telling you, Lord, I will lay on the... Astaghfirullah. Subhanallah. This is working apparently, huh? Yes. Yes. I don't know. We're fine. Fajr. 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 Uh, cancel uh, bomb by mistake. It was all your fault, Sheikh Hassan. We keep talking about the grass. Okay. So we just wanted to greet uh, uh, Sheikh Jamaan. Yeah, marhaba. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah. Welcome to uh, this nice gathering. Nice you are welcome in KLA. KLA? KLA. What's your name? What's your name? Kuala Lumpur. Malaysia. Okay. Uh, uh, subhanallah. Absolutely. Sorry for the interruption. So we we're talking about these sacrifices that a da'i would eventually have to offer for Allah's sake. The thing is, whenever uh, you know one of us goes through some struggle, like if you're held at any airport for five hours, six hours, or even twelve hours, and then you're asked to uh, take a hike, get back. Where you come from? Oh, but I've been flying for the past 24 hours and uh, I'm here to give a lecture now. We're, we're not interested. So, how do we actually feel about it? Do we feel like, you know, very bitter taste? Do we feel like we're oppressed? Or do we feel, well, I have made an attempt, I've tried, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, We're only asked to make an effort, to strike. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, you guys did that in earlier. I don't to try And when Allah said, I'm not correcting the message. Mm -hmm. Even if that is the answer. Now, so we as that, you should do our best driving in the way of Allah. That's what the Quran is. So, leave the result for Allah. Now, and that's what we pray to Allah that maybe continue driving until our last breath. And maybe try to do our best to help Allah to give us the last breath. Inshallah. Okay, Sheikh, thank you very much for the answer. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I believe that uh, the more uh, more difficult it is the test, higher the reward. And as the Prophet said, that all the Anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their test was the hardest. Compared to that, we are nothing. Yeah. So we pray to Allah that, but we say that, lay not under the burden we just yeah. So if the test is higher, and, and if Allah makes us pass, inshallah, we expect a higher reward. Wait a minute. So you mean that if you are tested, this is not necessarily a sign that Allah is punishing you, Allah isn't happy with you, rather it could mean the opposite in the light of the hadith that the Prophet sallallahu said, أَشَدُّ النَّاسِ بَلَاءً الْأَنْبِيَاءِ The most severely tested people are the prophets. So he loved them, he tested them more than others. Allah clearly says in the Quran that no one can go to Jannah without being tested. Mm. The question is when a calamity comes on someone, it can be because of two reasons. Mm. One can be that he's on the wrong path and Allah is giving azab, or it can be he's on the right path and Allah is testing him and giving him a higher test so that he gives him a higher reward. Jannah may be generous for those. Mm. So any calamity is because of two reasons. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever difficulty we are, we are facing in life is because of the second category. But okay. Allah thinks that He wants to give us a better reward. He's putting us in a bigger test and maybe pass it. You, you know, you just brought it to yourself. You opened up another serious question, which is, I believe on behalf of all the viewers, and once again, I, I do apologize for finishing the previous live broadcast accidentally. I hope the viewers will still catch up with us, inshallah. So on behalf of all the viewers, I would ask this question. And how would you figure out or distinguish whether the test or the calamity is a matter of test or a means of punishment? If we are on the path of Quran and Sunnah, that we are following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not breaking law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, following the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, rest assured we are on the street. Irrespective of what the calamity. If we are breaking the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're not following the Quran, we are doing all the harams or the habira, then even if you are getting a benefit and a pleasure in the world, you think it is your azab actually. Mm. Even you may be staying in a palace, you may be the richest man in the world, and you are breaking the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be assured that this is azab for you. Mm. And Allah says Allah tests the people with wealth, mm. the children with wealth, all Allah test. Mm. So if a calamity befalls on you, you should you should always analyze that is your life according to Quran. Mm. If it is, rest assured whatever the world says, mm. you are on the straight path. So if it is not, then that is called istidraj, as Allah said in the Quran, سَنَسْتَدِرِجُهُمْ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ So he may give extra and gives respite, he gives wealth, health, and plenty of authority. So people who are indulged into even major sins, this is not a sign that Allah is happy with them. It's, it's, it's a matter of istidraj, it's really, really dangerous. You know, Dr. Zakir, um, again, uh, as a doctor by profession, as an MD. Normally, and through our experience, and this is something that is very uh, observed and not noticeable, which is uh, a successful engineer wants his sons or his children to be engineers like him, so that they would inherit the office and the, the business. And obviously, a doctor would like his children to be all doctors, a dentist likewise, a lawyer likewise. But why would a da'iyah, a caller to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Sheikh Asim, prepare yourself, I'm going to ask you a question, what is the difference between a da'i and a da'iyah? Okay? It has nothing to do with masculine and feminine. <laughs> Not everything we talk about is muscles, Sheikh Asim, okay? So, uh, why would a da'i, who is been through Allah, He's been stopped at the airports. He's been banned from giving talks, stopping from giving lectures. He's, maybe his assets are being frozen. Uh, you know, some agencies are trying to assassinate his personality, discredit his credibility. Why would any person on earth, after going through this lot of hassle, would still desire and pray day and night to have not one of his children not only the boys, rather all his children to be in the same field of da'wah. Please enlighten us. I do agree with you that most of the people, as you said, that the engineer would like his son to be an engineer, or a daughter to be an engineer, a doctor would like the uh, son to be a doctor, a businessman, the son to be a businessman. But I'm not agreeing that this is always right. Mm. Uh, I was a doctor, 
mm. and I became a doctor. I chose the profession to me for the death profession, so in humanity. Then I found a better profession as Allah says in the Quran in Surah Fasila chapter 41 verse 10. Allah says, Woman has to call a minimum boy or one of them for the Who is better in speech than one who invites to the way of their Lord? Was righteous and say that I'm Muslim. Mm. So when I found a better profession, I gave up the profession of becoming a doctor. <laughs> yes, my parents wanted me to become a doctor. Like You're a doctor. Medical doctor. No, no, Let besides me. being a medical doctor, doctor, you are a heart doctor. <laughs> A cardiologist in a sense of treating the hearts. Um, you, you can say I'm a doctor, I've changed from a doctor of body to doctor of soul. Mm -hmm. That's so, beautiful. So then, uh, then we realized, I remember my mother, you know, she wanted me to become uh, like a heart specialist, like Chris Banner. Mm -hmm. Chris Banner was the first uh, doctor in the world, heart specialist, who did the heart So she wanted you to be a cardiologist? Yes, she wanted me to be somewhat like Chris Banner, who was from Saudi. Mm -hmm. So when I met Sheikh Ahmed Dilad and I got involved in the field of Dawah, then I asked her, and I started my Dawah. So would you want to become a doctor, I like Prince Bernard or like Sheikh mm. So she being intelligent, she said both. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, she's really intelligent. <laughs> Later on, when we got into the field and became a full-time guy after a few years after, they would you want me to become like Sheikh Zidat or Prince Bernard. She said I can sacrifice a thousand Prince Bernard for my Allah life. Allah Akbar, so MashaAllah. So she realized that it's a better profession. MashaAllah. And coming back to your question that, uh, after getting so much of trials and tribulations and difficulties in life, would you want your one of your children to become a yeah. I would say I would want 100%. All my children, Allah 100%. Allah. Allah. Because whenever there are trials and tribulations and you look into your life that you are on correct Quran and Sunnah, that means Alhamdulillah, Allah is accepting your work. Don't look at the results, you have to look at them on the Quran and Sunnah. And when trials and tribulations are coming, Allah wants to give you higher. Mm. And I would want my children to get higher reward than me. Mm. That the reason we don't only do dua that may our children die. Despite all the struggle, despite all the obstacles and the harassment and the personality assassination, so you know, normally a person would like for his children to be better than him, not to go through the hassle. And we know in advance that if you were to give da'wah, then you gotta face those challenges. So despite all of that, you still wanted them to be uh, dua. For example, if you take an examination, a group of examination, when you just study for the examination a few hours or a few days before you are struggling, it's a difficult time, but the moment you pass, then you get a degree, maybe a bachelor's degree in arts or science. More difficult the test, higher the reward. Mm -hmm. when, you apply, when you appear for a medical examination, which is one of the most difficult, in the academic examination. Mm. Once you pass, you get a doctor. Mm. In front of you, you get more. Right. But before the examination, it is more difficulty, bigger test, and you fear that you may fail. So there is a price for everything. Price. So similarly, higher the test, greater the reward. So I don't only pray that my children become guys. I do pray, but I also pray that may they become bujad to this one. You know, after the Prophet, Allah there's Allah no Allah. Prophet that will come yeah. next to the Jalbi. Then we pray that may our children become Shaykh of Islam. You know, like Ibn you know, that a hadith yeah. here, every 100 years there will be a person who will tell them, then it talks about Shaykh of Islam. Form to the Ummah. Uh, so I pray that, you know, they will be multiple them better than me. Yeah, I'm not saying we are just respect, you know, and may Allah accept their effort. And I always tell my children that whatever thing you get, whatever knowledge you get, all this is sifar, it's zero. Allah Number Akbar. one is Allah's help. Allah if Allah, Allah helps you, then you can work on it. If Allah, Allah forsakes you, who is there, then you can help you. So let the believer put the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Ran chapter 3, verse 96. So I always tell my children, though they're doing their sharia, they're doing the Islamic study, I said, all this is good, but number one is you should try and learn the art of how to get Allah's help. Allah and the Akbar. only way that art is, it's an open secret. Mm. You follow the Quran and Sunnah. The more you follow the Quran and Sunnah, the more you sacrifice, more with the help of Allah come. Mm. And believe me, more the trials and tribulations that you have, more will you be at peace at heart and mind. I am more peaceful now in heart and mind as compared to what I was few years before. Shaykh, you know, subhanAllah, all what you've been saying right now is referred to in Surah al furqan Allah has guided us, obviously, the elite, to say that the elite, Ibad al-Rahman, they constantly invoke Allah with this very unique supplication. They say, 
والذين يقولون ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما So those who constantly invoke Allah and this is some sort of inspiration Allah is guiding us as what to do they invoke Allah ربنا our Lord هب لنا grant us from our spouses and our offspring comfort for our eyes peace for our minds وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Do not just make us righteous rather make us إِمَامًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Make us leaders what you just say that you know your aim and heart your really aim and heart and this is what the Prophet ﷺ said do not sit there for you know he said whenever you ask Allah for paradise don't say oh Allah just take me to heaven ask him for الفردوس الأعلى aim heart so وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا you're so right I mean I just learned and listened from you because I keep telling my children that I want you to be whatever doctor, engineer, whatever but number one dua to Allah but now not just dua reformers mujaddid but there is only one mujaddid every 100 years we pray to Allah we let Allah choose he added the thing that you know we always say that if I pray to Allah if my prayer is answered answer I'm happy Allah if my prayer is not answered I'm 10 times happy it's the answer either way so if it's not answered I'm 10 times happy because it's the first was my choice the second was Allah's choice so we just and we can ask for the sky even a shoe string you can ask for Allah even from the sky so let aim the highest like you rightly said we pray that we we and our family get Jannata Firdos Arala and add to it May we see the face of Allah as often as possible. Yeah. So add to it. In the company of Muhammad Sallallahu So I say Jannatul Ala al Ula in the company of Muhammad Sallallahu Sallam and the Ambiyad al Kul Farashidi and seeing the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as often as possible. So actually the more your knowledge increases, then your vision increases more. Correct. You know, so it opens the thing, up your mind. Yes, and then I mean the dua that I used to do maybe twenty years back was different. Mm. The dua did that ten years back is different. The dua did two years back is different. Now it is different. Mm. Initially it was only you know maybe go for jannah. As knowledge keeps on increasing, we try and you know like you rightly said previously, I have to only ask that make my children become die. Yeah. And then alhamdulillah. Subhanallah. Uh, you know some of the viewers are asking about the mujaddid. L- let me give you an example. And since you've mentioned Shaykh al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on him. You know he suffered like one of the most of those who suffer for Allah's sake from the dua and the scholars even when he was in prison he converted the suffering into joy and delight he drove his enemies literally crazy he said what my enemies could do to me could harm me by any means of course not what he said he said subhanallah whenever they throw me in prison thank you so much finally I have some privacy you know Asim al Hakim and myself this morning while having breakfast or chatting and said that he loves to spend time by himself. I'm an outgoing person. I like to go hiking, I like to go he likes to be in tennis table indoor. Okay. So Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said even in prison this is some sort of privacy. Uh, and exactly contemplation and khalwa uh even if worse come to worse according to them if they execute me if they hang me if they kill me if they poison me this is a martyr them i die as a shaheed uh, if they kick me out of the country and say you're not wanted here sir we're taking your passport away and you wanted everywhere he, he converted that suffering into the life they say siyaha I'm, you know, mashallah, I, I believe you are in a much better place. And allow me in a little bit, inshallah, we will show the viewers where you stay in. And, you know, the Jannah, the Jannah is in the believer's heart. This is what we say. A mujaddid, brothers and sisters, is a person who doesn't keep, just teach and give da'wah. No. A person who revives the ummah. The ummah is currently, you can say, semi day. Am I exaggerating if I say that? Paralyzed. Huh? Paralyzed. Paralyzed. So when a few days ago, 
uh, Trump announced the Jolan Heights as, you know, belong to Israel. And you hear no sound whatsoever. This is like a state of paralysis. Then before that, when Jerusalem was announced as a capital of, you know, the occupation forces, I don't call it a state, okay? Then a, a complete paralysis. But among the believers, those whose hearts are worried about that, the young right now, it could be your son, it could be one of our sons, insha'Allah, one day, insha'Allah, there will be a mujaddid as the Prophet sallallahu said. But Shaykh, let's get into real business. Your business is da'wah, our business is da'wah. And alhamdulillah wa shukrullah, brothers and sisters, we suffer not the least, alhamdulillah. Wallahi, we feel no suffering. Anything happens, qaddarallahu wa ma sha'a ta'a. We feel blessed. So how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala convert that suffering and pain into delight, into joy, into pleasure? Radiallahu anhu wa radu anhu. I remember Shaykh Didat, may Allah have mercy on him, on his soul. Allahumma ameen. May Allah make his great a garden of paradise. Your teacher and our teacher, whenever he traveled across the world and whenever he invited the biggest um, you know, priests, rabbis, and cetera, for uh, debates, and he challenged them. And these debates were so powerful. Now they don't want this to happen anymore. They don't want another Ahmadi that. They don't want that man to be traveling across the world and convincing the followers of other faith, hey, you guys are not actually following the truth. You know, there is only one God and monotheism means to worship only one ilah. And what you believe in, in is not monotheism. It is definitely polytheism. So you prove, and Sheikh Ahmad did that before you have proved that Islam wasn't spread by the sword. Rather, it was spread by the word. While the ummah is in its weakest conditions, but Islam is announced to be the fastest growing religion across the globe by the grace of Allah. We see that firsthand, share that. So do you think that these guys are stopping you and stopping the dua and again it's the popular dua and the effective dua because they see that they have a great impact and influence on people leaving, you know, whatever they believe in and coming to the truth. You know, again, what I'm talking about is that the opposition that you're facing I believe it is simply because of your influence, because of the way that you're convincing people to come to Islam. If people who are fair to us, they say, Zakir, you know, your statement is fake. Let's make a debate. So the Pope would come forward and say, you know what, the Vatican Pope would say, Zakir Nair, you're all wrong, and I'm willing to debate you and to challenge you publicly because they actually refused to debate Sheikh Ahmad did that repeatedly. Would they come one day and say, uh, you know, Zakir, let's come to a common ground and have a public debate and it will be aired on the sea and, and on Fox News and, and all of that. I wish that they come. <laughs> and why wouldn't it come? Why do you think it will never come? Uh, these people who are enemies of Islam, they are afraid of the truth. And when you ask them the question that uh, are they against the because people like suffering or because of the popularity they have, I would say that these people are afraid of those people who have done the faith. Mm. All success is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I feel that though we don't deserve it, Allah has been very kind uh, and it has been fuzzed up it is all because of the of the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Almighty. Mm. So when they see that the message of Allah is so effective and when they say that they are against terrorism, then they find that the Ta'i is able to prove that Islam is not a religion of terrorism. They want to lay the allegation that the Ta'i is a terrorist. Mm. So that they could stop the spread of the message. Mm. But Alhamdulillah, Summa Alhamdulillah. I personally say that I thank the government of India and, and I thank the Prime Minister of India, Modi, for, for two reasons. Really? Number one, that you know, so he has spent maybe hundreds of millions of dollars in the media to the allegation. Oh, and uh, those people who have heard me and I have even heard one or two of my full lectures, I'm sure 
that they agree that this is all fake news. Mm. Maybe previously about maybe about you know two thirds of the Muslims knew, maybe about ten percent of the non Muslims of India knew. After this, mashallah, more than ninety five percent of the Muslims know me, more than eighty percent of the non Muslims in India know me. Alhamdulillah. And those who know me and have seen my video are surely giving to us to me that may Allah support and make them mm -hmm. accept the dua. Those who have not heard me at all, that's a vast majority, looking at the media like a normal innocent viewer would think I'm a terrorist. Mm. And many of them may be abusing me, maybe cursing me. That reminds me of a, of a scholar who had told that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created a particular sect. Father mm. Umar one to curse him and then he gives sawab. Or when people pray for me, I give sawab. Mm. People curse me falsely, that gets me no into sawab. All my all the good deeds of the person come to me. If that is exhausted, my bad deed goes to me. So I'm praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it is win win in both the situation. So Alhamdulillah I believe that whatever work I did for the last more than twenty five years, oh, after uh, Modi and after Indian government led the allegation of terrorism against me, I knew that there would be problems in India. Never in my dream I thought that I would be labeled as a terrorist because I'm, I'm quite upfront. I'm one of the persons who have gone and spoken against conflicts against terrorism mm -hmm. in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. How could they lay that allegation? You know, what, what, what is really weird and strange, a person who walks in with seven semi automatic machine guns. And he kills worshippers while they're bound down and prostrating themselves. An older uncle who says, Welcome, brother, he gets a shot, he gets shot in the chest, three bullets. A child, three years old, he smiles to the perpetrators, to the terrorists, and he shoots them in the brains and he kills them. And he kills men and women, even handicapped people. He has no mercy whatsoever. And the world is not pronouncing him as a terrorist. And it's like a man, it is. So what kind of machine gun do you use? It is, it is, I would say it is, uh, as Samuel Kala said, it is the sword, sword of the foot. So it is maybe, and this conquers the heart's more. Yeah. So I believe that, alhamdulillah, now my message is heard more. And, and, and it's the last one of that who gets a video. And the Indian government, you know, previously I would say that, okay, we could get some justice now after this government. Come into power, the chances of getting justice in the court of law mm. have become minimal. But Alhamdulillah, when the government want to attach all my properties, a non Muslim judge, I don't know him, mm. a Sikh, mm. he was out of his way and he says in the court that get me, I have seen Allah hundreds Allah. of his lectures, mm. get me only one statement against terrorism and I'll allow you to attach the property. And they could not, so not even one statement. He refused. But that doesn't come in the media. What it, so the thing is, they are spending millions and millions of dollars to try and malign me. But whatever they're doing, Allah is the best of plan. If they plan and plot, Allah plans it better. And as you ask me to know, Alhamdulillah, after this onslaught uh, on me, mashallah, there are more than uh, 10 countries in the world, Muslim and non Muslim, offering me comments today. And I feel that, mashallah, today I think the situation of Muslim. But you don't have the Saudi citizenship. <laughs> I'm a citizen of India, yes, mashallah. Alhamdulillah wa shukri. And go ahead, mm -hmm. yeah, no, please, please. And, and I believe today, mashallah, seeing the situation that is there of the of Muslim countries around the world, I would say that the best of the worst Muslim countries today in the world for a Muslim to live in Malaysia. Mashallah. And mashallah. the best city to live is Putsujaya. Mashallah, free, beautiful, alhamdulillah. So after my survey, what I did in time different parts of the world, and you know there are various turmoil. Yeah, this is a free advertisement, Sheikh. You should shout for that. <laughs> Mashallah, indeed, it's uh, it's one of the most beautiful places, and the people here are very sweet. Uh, they're very very kind. Sheikh, what is the biggest number of audience you have ever had? I remember in India, like you know, at one point, at one point in in Dubai, we had about fifty five thousand all at once. In India, what is the biggest number of audience you had under the same roof? Uh, well, that's what I'm Allah by his grace. The largest audience was in Kishan, and more than a million of them. Allahu Allah. Akbar. And it's Masha all because of Allah. Yeah. And that time, you know, we feel that Allah, Allah is testing us, and now our test is difficult. That may He, I mean, the Shaitan not come into our way. Mm -hmm. And we do Allah's and we accept. You know, I, I, I don't consider myself 
been knowledge there are millions of Muslims by more than me. They're better than me, everything, it is only Hazar and Fazir. Alhamdulillah. Okay, let me share with you the good news, which you already know, but also to assure the viewers. Subhanallah, in order to gather a half million or one million audience in one place, it requires a huge effort. It takes a whole year-round preparation, and it costs tons of money, subhanallah. And there is always a big danger and a great risk, because one million audience, you have to have seats for a million audience. Can you imagine? Okay, they stop that from happening. Now Allah has given you a replacement. Awadak Allahu khairan. What you have in a state of one million, tens of millions, hundreds of millions. Subhanallah. Now with a single handset, a phone like that, your life, mashallah, you see currently how many people are watching currently. And overnight, it will cross a million by the grace of Allah. At zero cost, I'm only using your Wi-Fi for you. <laughs> <laughs> so at zero cost by the grace of Allah. Whenever a door is closed, brothers and sisters, Allah opens multiple doors. Whenever a person sacrifices anything for Allah's sake, Allah gives him better than what he sacrificed for his sake. You know, wallahi, wallahi, the biggest concern should be maintaining the fastness until we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we die in this condition. Otherwise, there have been a lot of people who are dua, who are even scholars at Al-Azhar, or here or there, big institutes, and subhanAllah, they give up on all of that. They just simply handed over their deed to the shaitan, and they have become dua of the shaitan. May Allah guide us what is best. So we want to share with the viewers that really we're not worried about the da'wah. I personally, and I'm very certain that you too and the Jibreel, are you worried about the spread of Islam? Alhamdulillah. Huh? spread with or without us. Exactly. With or without us. Allah, Allah said it in the Quran. You have two references. I'm going to test your memory. <laughs> one in Surah Tawbah and one in Surah As-Saf. And other ayah So they, they do and they try their best to put out the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah has promised and has vowed that He will fulfill His life, He will spread His deen, even though the kuffar and the non believers, not just they hate it, they spend all the wealth in the world to stop it. But it is unstoppable because it is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're not worried about the spirit of the deen, brothers and sisters. It's just an honor for any of us to be part of that. What we're worried about, even Dr. Dakar Naim, this icon, what he's worried about, <laughs> what, we're, what we're worried about is maintaining steadfastness and thabat until we die in a state of belief. The most frequently recited dua by Prophet Muhammad according to the hadith of Umm Salama, Ya Muqallib al Qulub, Thabbit Qalbi ala deen. So just shed some light on that, then I will give you a break, inshallah. Uh, uh, going back to the earlier verse that Allah says in the Quran, in uh, the Surah uh, Tawbah chapter 9, verse number 30, Surah Saf chapter 16, verse number 9. That Allah sent his messenger with the religion of truth so that he can reveal over all the other religion. However much the mushrikin don't like it. However much the those who worship the idol do not like it. So this is a promise for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he make his deen prevail. It's a promise. Allah does not require you and me, the rubbish that we are. The deen is going to prevail. Mm. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He make us instrumental. Allah doesn't require us. You know, Allah can create a million of duas, a million than better than us. He can create a million peace TV, a million than better than peace TV, just in a fraction of a second. Mm. It's easy. Mm. We pray to Allah that may He make us instrumental in making it easy. His deen is going to prevail for sure, without doubt. So we only pray to Allah that the deen is going to prevail and may utilize us and keep us steadfast on the steadfast. And as Allah says in the man, 
تكون في وسمي ذات ها ربنا لا سيدي قلوبنا بعد من ذيتنا وحبلا من ذيتنا من ذيتنا من ذيتنا that oh lord after you have let's keep up with you yeah. so we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we always keep on praying that may we come closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the test get difficult no problem see to us that we pass the test yeah. that's most important and and always remember that it is only due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah. not even 0.0001 percent is because of our effort it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who accepts the effort and he converts it into result. Yeah. And result is not the test. Gardens beneath which rivers are flowing. Thawaban min indillah wallahu indahu husna thawab. And Allah has the greatest thawab of the world. So I would uh, uh, let Dr. Zakir I, I just give you the rough translation of the ayah of Surah uh, Ali Imran. And I want you to shed some light on that. In what sense? In a sense that Alhamdulillah, you really went through a lot. Okay? But how do you feel about it? How do you feel about it? You know, comparing yourself to, for instance, Bilal ibn Rabah, Suhaid al Rumi, and others and others. You know, every now and then we hear, oh, Dr. Zakir Naik is given the citizenship of whatever, and he's, he's become a Saudi citizen. <laughs> Sheikh Asim. <laughs> Will you give him the nationality? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we want to know how it is and how do you feel about it, inshallah. Please. I would like to just summarize in the words of the Quran and Salim Raja to see what the people That they plan and what did Allah plan? And Alhamdulillah, whatever uh, the enemies of Islam are trying to plot against the Tuas and against Muslims and against Islam, Alhamdulillah, Allah is the best of planner and He plans better. And we were doing dawah in India, mashallah. We expected that it's going to come. But Alhamdulillah, Allah made us work for more than 25 years in India. And Alhamdulillah, if you think that Allah has blessed us, we don't deserve even a small, minute percentage of it. And life here is, mashallah, much better. They try to do what they can. But Alhamdulillah, Allah has given us all the ni'mah. And now that I said earlier, as far as the health is concerned, the person's physical life is concerned, it is much better. MashaAllah, the Iman has, has grown, Alhamdulillah. And even though they're trying their level best to put whatever they can, all the problems, and uh, they are trying to attach all the properties, etc. And, and I say to, say to my wife that, Alhamdulillah, what better can it be? Imagine if you have wealth and, and an earthquake comes and a house is destroyed, mm -hmm. or a calamity comes, or someone comes and robs it, or if you, if you lose it in a business, it's your loss. What better can it be that for the sake of Allah, the property, the kuffar are trying to take, they cannot be any better ajar than that. Mm -hmm. They cannot be any better way that our, our wealth can be utilized. Mm -hmm. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our effort. But uh, we as uh, Dai should keep on continuing striving harder and harder. Mm -hmm. The main thing Allah checks uh, is the striving, the results are in the hands of Allah. So whatever we do, has a mitzvah mm -hmm. The result is not in our hands at all, in, a, uh, in our hands is striving. No. So we as Muslims, we as Dai should continue striving irrespective however much the plot. And our Iman should go stronger and it has Alhamdulillah. And MashaAllah, Allah has been very kind that compared to the other Muslims in the world, Allah has just put us in a much better situation, MashaAllah. When you look at the Muslims around us, you see that thousands, tens of thousands, millions are in a much worse situation than us. Yeah. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Lay not on us a burden greater than we can bear. And that is the last verse uh, in the Quran of Surah Bakra. And we know that Allah does not lay a burden on us greater than we can bear. And that's the verse of the Quran. So we only pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may He continue accepting effort and may He continue keeping and us in the way where we can strive for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Dr. Dhakr, subhanAllah, uh, in the light of the ayah that we quoted earlier, wa udu fi sabili. You know, if we just find it so easy that we travel in first class or business class and we're checked in five-star hotels and we're moving in... Uh, Assalamu oh, Assalamu alaikum. Oh, Oops. Oops. Bismillah. This is your entrance to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, 
not questions himself. You know, what, what is going on? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam traveled on foot 60 miles to Iraq. And what happened? Allah is here. 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 The Prophet wasn't a terrorist. The Prophet wasn't somebody who was fanatic or extremist. The Prophet ﷺ was, as Allah described in Surah Al-Anbiya, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you, but as mercy for everything that exists. Wallahi, His mercy even to the non-believers. Yet, they received them with the stones. They throw stones at him. They cast stones at him. He bled sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if he, the most beloved to Allah, the dearest and the greatest of all creation, suffer that much, then if you're banned from entering your own country, if your passport is confiscated, if whatever happens, that is very low compared to what happened to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you, do you ever feel any sorrow or grief? Do you feel like, oh man, what put me in that situation? Why did I have to do that to my son? Do you, do you feel that? There were questions asked by me, by the press and some of the Muslim friends, that Zakir Naik, do you regret doing something that I made with the situation? I said, Alhamdulillah, if I had opportunity, I would have done more dawah than what I did. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And Allah has really blessed us, and I feel I'm one of the most blessed persons that Allah has given us opportunity to work in His way, and we don't give up. It's Alhamdulillah. And I'm sure can be misdiving. You know, Dr. Becker, you, you're a medical doctor by profession. So when a baby, when the fetus is in the womb of his mother or her mother, he is given a source of provision, one source of provision, which is the umbilical cord, right? The baby in the womb of his or her mother, they think that this is the vast universe. They don't see anything beyond it. And they feel that they're safe heaven. But when they come out, Allah provides it with double sources where they get the milk from both breasts, subhanAllah, fresh, nutritive. And then they think that's it, this is a safe heaven, but at one point there must be weaning. And then the child will be able to eat and drink from variety of food and drink. And Allah said, Sometimes the person is, is having short sightedness. And he's like, you know, I don't want to say the term like grass eaters. They only look beneath their feet. They say, what is with the grass? I can't, I can't grass. What is with the grass? If you use something like vegetation, fruit. <laughs> Just wanted to give that. Uh... <laughs> First and uh, Rigo again. First, first. Thing. Is that no. is the 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 Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back. Sorry for the interruption. I think I uh, pressed the uh, uh, cancel uh, bomb by mistake. <laughs> it was all your fault, Shah Hassan. <laughs> okay. keep talking about the grass. <laughs> okay. So we just wanted to greet uh, uh, Sheikh Jam'an. Yeah, marhaba. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah. Welcome to uh, this nice gathering. Nice you are welcome in KLA. KLA? KLA. <laughs> okay. uh, subhanallah. Sorry for the interruption. So we're talking about these sacrifices that Adai would eventually have to offer for Allah's sake. The thing is, whenever uh, you know one of us goes through some struggle, like if you're held at any airport for five hours, six hours, or even 12 hours. And then you're asked to uh, take a hike, get back to where you come from. Oh, but I've been flying for the past 24 hours and uh, I'm here to give a lecture now. You know, we're not interested. So how do we actually feel about it? Do we feel like, you know, very bitter taste? Do we feel like we're oppressed? Or do we feel, well, I have made an attempt, I've tried, 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَن لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى وَأَنَّ سَعِيهُ سَلْفَيْرَى We were fully asked to make an effort, to strive. Go ahead. Alright, I'm going to give you that in a little bit here. I don't want to strive. And then Allah said, I'm going to correct you in a month. I'm going to give you the message. I'm going to give you the message. We as that you should do our best striving in the way of Allah. That's what the Quran is. Some men leave the result for Allah. No. And that's what we pray to Allah that maybe continue striving till our last breath and maybe try and spread the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala last breath in my uh, Iman in Greece. No. And as I believe that uh, the more uh, more difficult is the test, higher the reward. And as the Prophet said that all the Ambiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their test was the hardest. Compared to that we are nothing. Yeah. So we pray to Allah that, but we say that lay not under the burden we don't have So if the test is higher, and, and if Allah makes us pass, inshallah, we expect a higher order. Wait a minute. So you mean that if you are tested, this is not necessarily a sign that Allah is punishing you, Allah isn't happy with you. Rather, it could mean the opposite in the light of the hadith that the Prophet sallallahu said, أَشَدُّ النَّاسِ بَلَاءً الْأَنْبِيَاءِ the most severely tested people are the prophets. So he loved them, he tested them more than others. Yeah. Allah clearly says in the Quran that no one can go to Jannah without the test. Mm. The question is when a calamity comes on someone, it can be because of two reasons. Mm. One can be that he's on the wrong path and Allah is giving us up, or it can be he's on the right path and Allah is testing him and giving him a higher test so that he gives him a higher reward. Jannah may be Jannah for those. Mm. So any calamity is because of two reasons. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever difficulty we are, we are facing in life is because of the second category. Okay. But Allah thinks that He wants to give us a better reward, He is putting us in a bigger test, and maybe pass it. If, you know, you just brought it to yourself. You opened up another serious question, which is, I believe on behalf of all the viewers, and once again, I, I do apologize for finishing the previous live broadcast accidentally. I hope the viewers will still catch up with us, inshallah. So on behalf of all the viewers, I would ask this question. And how would you figure out or distinguish whether the test or the calamity is a matter of test or a means of punishment? If we are on the path of Quran and Sunnah, that we are following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not breaking law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, following the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, rest assured we are on the street. Irrespective of the calamity. If we are breaking the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are not following the Quran, we are doing all the harams or the habira, then even if you are getting a benefit and a pleasure in the world, you think it is the other way. Mm. Even you may be staying in a palace, you may be the richest man in the world, and you are breaking the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be assured that this is azab for you. Mm. Allah says Allah tells the people with wealth, mm. children, by all will attest. Mm. So if a calamity befalls on you, you should you should always analyze that is your life according to Quran. Mm. If it is, rest assured, whatever the word says, mm. you're on the straight path. So if it is not, then there is called istidraj. As Allah said in the Quran, min la So he may give extra and gives respite, he gives wealth, health, and plenty of authority. So people who are indulged into even major sins, this is not a sign that Allah is happy with them. It's, it's, it's a matter of istidraj, it's really, really dangerous. You know, Dr. Zakir, um, again, uh, as a doctor by profession, as an MD, normally, and through our experience, and this is something that is very uh, observed and not noticeable, which is uh, a successful engineer wants his sons or his children to be engineers like him so that they would inherit the office and the, the business and obviously a doctor would like his children to be all doctors a dentist likewise a lawyer likewise but why would a da'iyah a caller to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sheikh asim prepare yourself i'm going to ask you a question what is the difference between a da'i and a da'iyah okay it has nothing to do with masculine and feminine <laughs> not everything we talk about is muscles sheikh asim okay <laughs> so, um, why would a da'i, who has been through a lot, has been stopped at the airports, he's been banned from giving talks, stopping from giving lectures, he's, maybe his assets are being frozen, 
uh, you know, some agencies are trying to assassinate his personality, discredit his credibility. Why would any person on earth, after going through this lot of hassle, would still desire and pray day and night to have my, one of his children, not only the boys, rather all his children to be in the same field of da'wah? Please enlighten us. I do agree with you that most of the people have you said that the engineer would like his son to be an engineer or a daughter to be an engineer, a doctor would like the uh, son to be a doctor, a businessman, the son to be a businessman, but I'm not agreeing that this is always right. Mm. Uh, I was a doctor mm. and I became a doctor, I chose the profession to be for the dead profession, so the humanity, and I found a better profession as Allah says in the Quran, it's the first chapter 41 verse 20. Allah says, Roman has to call a man of boy, but what about his body? Who is better in speed than one who invites to the way of their Lord? What's righteousness? Say that I'm Muslim. Mm. When I found a better profession, I gave up the profession of becoming a doctor. Yeah. Yes, my parents wanted me to become a doctor. Like You're a doctor? Became. Medical doctor. No, no, Let besides me. being a medical so doctor, doctor, you're a heart doctor. A pathologist in a sense of truth in the hearts. Um, you can say I'm a doctor, I've changed from a doctor. Body, doctor of a soul. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Mashallah. So then, uh, then we realized, I remember my mother, you know, she wanted me to become uh, like a heart specialist, like Chris Banner. Mm -hmm. Chris Banner was the first uh, doctor in the world, heart specialist, put in the heart. So she wanted you to be a cardiologist? Yes, she wanted me somewhat like Chris Banner, who was from South Africa. Mm -hmm. So when I met Sheikh Ahmed Bidar and I got involved in the field of Dawah, then I asked her, when I started my Dawah, that would you want me to become a doctor, or like Chris Banner, or like Sheikh Bidar? Mm. So she being intelligent, she said both. <laughs> <laughs> well, like she's really intelligent. <laughs> Later on, when we got into the field and became a full-time guy after a few years after, they really wanted me to become like Sheikh Dilat or Chris Bana. She said I can sacrifice a thousand Chris Bana for myself. Allah Akbar. So she realized that it's a better profession. MashaAllah. And coming back to your question that uh, after getting so much of trials and tribulations and difficulties in life, would you want your one of your children to become a Thai, yeah. I would say I would want 100%, all my children, Allah 100%. Allah. Because whenever there are trials and tribulation, and we look into your life that you're on correct Quran and Sunnah, that means Alhamdulillah, Allah is accepting your work. Don't look at the results, you have to look at them on the Quran and Sunnah. And when trials and tribulation are coming, Allah wants to give you a higher mm. And I would want my children to get a higher reward than me. Mm. That the reason we don't only do that may have children who can die. Despite all the struggle, despite all the obstacles and the harassment and the personality assassination, so you know, normally a person would like for his children to be better than him, not to go through the hassle. And we know in advance that if you were to give da'wah, then you gotta face those challenges. So despite all of that, we still wanted them to be uh, du'a. For example, if you take an examination, a group of examination, when you just study for the examination a few hours or a few days before you are studying, it's a difficult time, but the moment you pass, then you get a degree, maybe a bachelor's degree in arts or science. More difficult the test, higher the reward. Mm -hmm. When you apply, when you appear for a medical examination, which is one of the most difficult in the academic examination, mm -hmm. once you pass, you get a doctor. Mm -hmm. you, you get more. Right. Right. But before the examination, it is more difficult, bigger test and you fear that you may fail. So there is a price for a price. So similarly, higher the test, greater the reward. So I don't only pray that my children can die. I do pray, but I also pray that may they become Mujaddid Islam. Mujaddid? You know, after the Prophet, Allah there's Allah. no Prophet that will come. Yeah. Next to the then we pray that may our children become Shaykh of Islam. You know, like in Britain, you know, that as Hadith yeah. here, every 100 years there will be but you then it talks about the reform to the Ummah. Uh, so I pray that you know they be multiple times better than me. We are nothing, we are just respect, you know, and may Allah accept their effort. And I always tell my children that whatever training you get, whatever knowledge you get, all this is sifar, zero. Allah the number Allah. one is Allah's help. Allah if Allah, Allah helps you, then you can walk away. If Allah, Allah forsakes you, who is there then you can help you. So let the believer put the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. in my chapter 3 was the one right. So I always tell my children, though they're doing their Sharia, they're doing the Islamic study, I said all this is good, but number one is you should try and learn the art of how to get Allah's help. Allah and the only way that art is, it's an open secret, mm -hmm. you follow the Quran. 
the more you follow the Quran and Sunnah, the more you sacrifice, more with the help of Allah. Mm. And believe me, more the trials and tribulations that you have, more will you be at peace at so heart and mind. mind. So I am more peaceful now in heart and mind as compared to whatever was few years before. Shaykh, you know, subhanAllah, all what you've been saying right now is referred to in Surah al furqan Allah has guided us, obviously, the elite, to say that the elite, Ibad rahman they constantly invoke Allah with this very unique supplication. They say, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَدَلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنٍ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا So those who constantly invoke Allah, and this is some sort of inspiration Allah is guiding us as what to do. They invoke Allah, رَبَّنَا our Lord هَبَلَنَا Grant us from our spouses and our offspring comfort for our eyes. Peace for our minds. وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Do not just make us righteous, rather make us إِمَامًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Make us leaders. What you just say that, you know, you're aiming hard. You're really aiming hard. And this is what the Prophet said. Do not sit it for, you know, he said whenever you ask Allah for paradise, don't say, oh Allah, just take me to heaven. Ask him for Al-Firdaus Al-A'la. Aim hard. So, وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَانًا You're so right. I mean, I just learned and listened from you. Because I keep telling my children that I want you to be whatever, doctor, engineer, whatever, but number one, dua to Allah. But now, not just dua, reformers, mujaddid. But there is only one mujaddid every 100 years. We pray to Allah, we let Allah choose. He added the thing that, you know, uh, we, always, we always say, that if I pray to Allah, mm. if my prayer is answered, answered, I'm happy. Allah. If my prayer is not answered, I'm ten times happy. It's because answered the first, either way. So if it's not answered, I'm ten times happy because it's the safe. first was my choice, the second oh. was Allah's choice. Yeah. Yeah. So we just and we can ask for the sky. Yeah. Even a shoe string you can ask for Allah. So even from the sky to so let aim the highest, like you rightly said, we pray that we be and our family get Jannatul Firdaus Arala and I add to it, may we see the face of Allah as often as possible. Yeah. So I add to it. In the company of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi So I say Jannatul Ala al Ula in the company of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and seeing the face of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala as often as possible. So actually the more your knowledge increases, then your vision increases more. Correct. You know, so the the thing, your mind. yes, and then I mean the dua that I used to do maybe twenty years back was different. Mm. The dua that I did ten years back is different. The dua I did two years back is different. Now it is different. Mm. Initially, it was only you know maybe go for jannah. And knowledge keeps on increasing. We try and you know, like you rightly said previously, I to only ask that make my children become die. Yeah. And then Alhamdulillah. Subhanallah. Uh, you know, some of the viewers are asking about the mujaddid. Let me give you an example. And since you've mentioned Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on him. You know, he suffered like one of the most of those who suffer for Allah's sake, from the dua and the scholars. Even when he was in prison, he converted the suffering into joy and delight. He drove his enemies literally crazy. He said, what my enemies could do to me could harm me by any means? Of course not. What he said is, subhanAllah. Whenever they throw me in prison, thank you so much. Finally, I have some privacy. You know, uh, Asim al-Hakim and myself, this morning while having breakfast, we were chatting and said that he loves to spend time by himself. I'm an outdoor person. I like to go hiking. I like to go. <laughs> he likes to be in mean, tennis table indoor. Okay. So, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, said, even in prison, this is some sort of privacy. Uh, and exactly contemplation and khalwa wafi qatli shahada even if worse come to worse according to them if they execute me if they hang me if they kill me if they poison me this is a matter of them I die as a shaheed and if they kick me out of the country and say you're not wanted here sir we're taking your passport away and you're wanted everywhere he, he converted that suffering into the light, they say, siyaha. I'm, you know, mashallah, I, I believe you are in a much better place. 
and allow me in a little bit, inshallah, we will show the viewers where you stay in, you know. The Jannah, the Jannah is in the believer's heart. This is what we say. A mujaddid, brothers and sisters, is a person who doesn't keep just teach and give da'wah. No. A person who revives the Ummah. The Ummah is currently, you can say, semi-dead. Am I exaggerating if I say that? Paralyzed. Huh? Huh? Paralyzed. Paralyzed. So when a few days ago, uh, Trump announced the Jolan Heights as, you know, belong to Israel. And you hear no sound whatsoever. This is like a state of paralysis. Then before that, when Jerusalem was announced as a capital of, you know, the occupation forces, I don't call it a state, okay? Then a, a complete paralysis. But among the believers, those whose hearts are worried about that, they're young right now, it could be your son, it could be one of our sons, inshallah, one day, inshallah, there will be a mujaddid as the Prophet sallallahu said. But Shaykh, let's get into real business. Your business is da'wah. Our business is da'wah. And alhamdulillah, wa shukurullah, brothers and sisters, we suffer not the least. Alhamdulillah. Wallahi, we feel no suffering. Anything happens, Allahu wa ma sha'a fa'a. We feel blessed. So how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala convert that suffering and pain into delight, into joy, into pleasure? Radhi Allahu anhu wa radu anhu. I remember Shaykh Didat, may Allah have mercy on him, on his soul, Allahumma ameen. May Allah make his great a garden of paradise, your teacher and our teacher. Whenever he traveled across the world, and whenever he invited the biggest, um, you know, priests, rabbis, etc., for uh, debates, and he challenged them. And his debates were so powerful. Now they don't want this to happen anymore. They don't want another Ahmad in that. They don't want that and that to be traveling across the world and convincing the followers of other faith, hey, you guys are not actually following the truth. You know, there is only one God and monotheism means to worship only one ilah. And what you believe in it is not monotheism. It is definitely polytheism. So you prove. And Sheikh Ahmad did that before you have proved that Islam wasn't spread by the sword, rather it was spread by the word. While the Ummah is in its weakest conditions, but Islam is announced to be the fastest growing religion across the globe by the grace of Allah. We see that firsthand, Sheikh Dhaq. So do you think that? These guys are stopping you and stopping the dua and again it's the popular dua and the effective dua because they see that they have a great impact and influence on people leaving, you know, whatever they believe in and coming to the truth. You know, again, what I'm talking about is that the opposition that you're facing, I believe it is simply because of your influence because of the way that you're convincing people to come to Islam. If people who refer to us, they say, Zakir, you know, your statement is fake. Let's make a debate. So the Pope would come forward and say, you know what? The Vatican Pope would say, Zakir Nair, you're all wrong, and I'm willing to debate you <laughs> and to challenge you publicly because they actually refuse to debate Sheikh Ahmad did that repeatedly. Would they come one day and say, uh, you know, Zakir, let's come to a common ground and have a public debate and it will be aired on the sea and, and on Fox News and, and all of that. I wish that they come. <laughs> and why wouldn't it come? Why do you think it will never come? Uh, these people who are enemies of Islam, they are afraid of the truth. And when you ask them the question that uh, are they against the because people are accepting or because of the popularity they have, I would say that these people are afraid those people who have the faith. Mm. All success is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I feel that though we don't deserve it, Allah has been very kind uh, and it has been fuzzed up it is all because of the of the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Almighty. Mm. So when they see that the message of Allah is so effective and when they say that they are against terrorism, then they find that the Dai is able to prove that Islam is not a religion of terrorism, 
they want to lay the allegation that the die is the terrorist mm. so that they could stop the spread of the message. Mm. But Alhamdulillah, Summa Alhamdulillah, I personally say that I thank the government of India and, and I thank the Prime Minister of India, Modi, for, for two reasons. Really, number one, that you know, so he has spent maybe hundreds of millions of dollars in the, in the media to the allegation against me. Oh, SubhanAllah. And uh, those people, who have heard me and have even heard one or two of my full lectures, I'm sure that they agree that this is all fake news. Mm. Maybe previously about maybe about you know two thirds of the Muslims knew me, maybe about ten percent of the non-Muslims of India knew me. After this, mashallah, more than ninety-five percent of the Muslims know me, more than eighty percent of the non-Muslims in India know me. Alhamdulillah. And those who know me and have seen my video are surely giving to us to me that may Allah. Those who have not heard me at all, that's the vast majority, looking at the media like a normal innocent viewer would think I'm a terrorist. Mm. And many of them may be abusing me, to be personal. That reminds me of a, of a scholar who had told that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created a particular sect, mm. Father Umar one, to curse him so that he gets up. Now when people pray for me, he gets up. People curse me falsely, that gets me over into sawa. All my, all the good deeds of the person come through. If that is exhausted, my bad deeds go through. So I'm praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it is win win in both the situations. So Alhamdulillah, I believe that whatever work I did for the last more than 25 years, oh after uh, Modi and after Indian government laid the allegation of terrorism against me, I knew that there would be problems in India. Never in my dream I thought that I would be labeled as a terrorist because I'm, I'm quite upfront. I'm one of the persons who have gone and spoken against conflicts against terrorism mm -hmm. in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. How could they lay that allegation? You know, what, what, what is really weird and strange, a person who walks in with seven semi-automatic machine guns, and he kills worshippers while they're bound down and prostrating themselves. An older uncle who says, welcome brother, he gets a shot, he gets shot in the chest, three bullets. A child, three years old, he smiles to the perpetrators, to the terrorists, and he shoots him in the brains and he kills him. And he kills men and women, even handicapped people. He has no mercy whatsoever. And the world is not pronouncing him as a terrorist. And psychomatic is. So what kind of machine gun do you use? It is, it is, I would say it is, uh, as humble call I said, it's the sword, sword of the sword. So it is maybe, and this conquers the heart smoke. Yeah. So I believe that, alhamdulillah, now my message is heard more. And, and, and it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gets it. And the Indian government, you know, previously I would say that, okay, we could get some justice now after this government coming to power, the chances of getting justice in the court of law mm. have become minimal. But Alhamdulillah, when the government want to attach all my properties, a non-Muslim judge, I don't know him, mm. a Sikh, mm. he was out of his way and he says in the court that get me, I have seen Allah hundreds Allah. of his lectures, mm. get me only one statement against terrorism and I'll allow you to attach the property. And they could not, so not even one statement, he refused. But that doesn't come in the media. What it, so the thing is, they are spending millions and millions of dollars to try and malign me. But whatever they're doing, Allah is the best of plan. If they plan and plot, Allah plans it better. And as you asked me to know, Alhamdulillah, after this onslaught uh, on me, mashallah, there are more than uh, 10 countries in the world, Muslim and non-Muslim, offering me come and stay. And I feel that, mashallah, today I think the situation of Muslim. But you don't have the Saudi citizenship. <laughs> I'm a citizen of India, yes, mashallah. Alhamdulillah wa shukri. And go ahead, sir. Yeah, no, please, please. And, and I believe today, mashallah, seeing the situation that is there of the of Muslim countries around the world, I would say that the best of the worst Muslim countries today in the world for a Muslim to live in Malaysia. Mashallah. And one of the best cities to live is Putsuja. Mashallah, three, beautiful, alhamdulillah. So after my survey, what I did in traveling different parts of the world, and you know there are various turmoil. Yeah, and this is free advertisement, shit. You should shout for that. <laughs> Mashallah, indeed, it's uh, it's one of the most beautiful places, and the people here are very sweet. Uh, they're very very kind. Sheikh, what is the biggest number of audience you have ever had? I remember in India, like you know, at one point, 
at one point. In, in Dubai, we had about 55,000 all at once. In India, what is the biggest number of audience we had under the same roof? The largest audience was in Ishan Gang, more than a million, I think. Allahu Akbar. And it's all because of Allah. Yeah. And that time, you know, we feel that Allah, Allah is testing us, and now our test is difficult. That may He, I mean, the Shaitan not come into our way. Mm -hmm. And we do Allah SWT, we accept. You know, I, I, I don't consider myself in the knowledge that there are millions of Muslims, but more knowledge than me. They're better than me, everything. It is only Hazrat and Fatihah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, let me share with you the good news, which you already know, but also to assure the viewers. Subhanallah, in order to gather a half million or one million audience in one place, it requires a huge effort. It takes a whole year round preparation and it costs tons of money, subhanallah. And there is always a big danger and a great risk because one million audience, you have to have seats for a million audience, can you imagine? Okay, they stop that from happening. Now Allah has given you a replacement. Awadak Allah khairan. What do you have in the state of one million, tens of millions, hundreds of millions? Subhanallah, now with a single handset, a phone like that, your life, mashallah, you see currently how many people are watching currently. And overnight, it will cross a million by the grace of Allah. At zero cost, I'm only using your Wi-Fi for you. <laughs> so at zero cost by the grace of Allah. Whenever a door is closed, brothers and sisters, Allah opens multiple doors. Whenever a person sacrifices anything for Allah's sake, Allah gives him better than what he sacrificed for his sake. You know, wallahi, wallahi, the biggest concern should be maintaining the fastness until we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we die in this condition. Otherwise, there have been a lot of people who are dua, who are even scholars at Al-Azhar, or here or there, big institutes, and subhanAllah, they give up on all of that. They just simply hand it over their deed to the shaitan, and they have become dua of the shaitan. May Allah guide us what is best. So we want to share with the viewers that really we're not worried about the da'wah. I personally, and I'm very certain that you too and Jibreel, are you worried about the spirit of Islam? Alhamdulillah. Huh? We'll spread with or without us. Exactly. With or without us. Allah well. said it in the Quran. You have two references. I'm going to test your memory. <laughs> one in Surah Tawbah and one in Surah As-Saf. You read لِيُطُفِئُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرِ And the other ayah we read on أَنْ يُطُفِئُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ So they, they do and they try their best to put out the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but Allah has promised and has vowed that He will fulfill His life, He will spread His deed even though the kuffar and the non-believers not just they hate it, they spend all the wealth in the world to stop it, but it is unstoppable because it is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're not worried about the spirit of the deen, brothers and sisters. It's just an honor for any of us to be part of that. What we're worried about, even Dr. Dakar Naim, this icon, what he's worried about, <laughs> what, we're, what we're worried about is maintaining steadfastness and thabat until we die in a state of belief the most frequently recited dua by Prophet Muhammad according to the hadith of Umm Salama, Ya Muqallib al Qulub, Thabbit Qalbi ala deen. So just shed some light on that, then I will give you a break, inshallah. Uh, uh, going back to the earlier verses, Allah said in the Quran, in Surah Tawbah chapter 9, verse 30, Surah Saf chapter 16, verse 9. That Allah sent his messenger with the religion of truth so that it revealed over all the other religions. However much the mushrikim don't like it, however much the those who worship the idol do not like it. So this is a promise for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he make you deem prevail. It's a promise. Allah does not require you and me the rubbish that we are. 
he's going to prevail. Mm. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he make us instrumental. Allah doesn't require us. You know, Allah can create a million of duas, a million times better than us. He can create a million peace TV, a million times better than peace TV, just in a fraction of a second. Mm. It's easy. Mm. We pray to Allah that may he make us instrumental in making it easy. His gene is going to prevail for sure, without doubt. So we only pray to Allah that the gene is going to prevail and may utilize us and keep us steadfast on the straight path. And as Allah says in the man, chapter number three, verse number eight, that Rabbana Allah says, Yukulu bana babu zaitana wa habla na mimi zara minna ka zara wa habla. That, O oh Lord, after you have tried, let's keep up the straight path. And may you love us. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we always keep on praying that may we come closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the test get difficult, no problem. See to us that we pass the test. Yeah. That's most important. And and always remember that it is only due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Not even 0 0.0001% is because of our effort. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who accepts the effort and he converts it into result. Yeah. And result is not the test. Beneath which rivers are flowing. Tawab min indillah wallahu indahu husna tawab. And Allah has the greatest tawab of the world. So I would uh, uh, let Dr. Zakir May I just give you the rough translation of the ayah of Surah uh, Ali Imran and I want you to shed some light on that. In what sense? In a sense that Alhamdulillah, you really went through a lot. Okay? But how do you feel about it? How do you feel about it? You know, comparing yourself to, for instance, Bilal ibn Rabah, Suhaid al Rumi, and others and others. You know, every now and then we hear, oh, Dr. Zakir Naik is given the citizenship of whatever, and he's, he's become a Saudi citizen. <laughs> Sheikh Asim. <laughs> Will you give him the nationality? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> okay, so we want to know how it is and how do you feel about it, inshallah. Please. <laughs> I would like to just summarize in the verse of the Quran, so in Quran chapter 3, verse 24, where Allah says, Yamkur, Yamkur, Allah, Allah, Khayl, Martin, that they plan and what did Allah plan? And Alhamdulillah, whatever uh, the enemies of Islam are trying to plot against the Duas and against Muslims and against Islam, Alhamdulillah, Allah is the best of planner and He plans better. And we were doing that in India, mashallah, we expected that it's going to come, but Alhamdulillah, Allah made us work for more than 25 years. In India, and Alhamdulillah, if you think that Allah has blessed us, you don't deserve even a small, minute percentage of it. And life here is, mashallah, much better. They try to do what they can. But Alhamdulillah, Allah has given all the ni'mah. And now that I said earlier, as far as the health is concerned, the person's physical life is concerned, it is much better. Mashallah, the iman has, has grown, Alhamdulillah. And even though they're trying their level best to put whatever they can, all the problems, and uh, they are trying to attach all the properties, etc. And, and I say to, say to my wife that, Alhamdulillah, what better can it be? Imagine if you have wealth and, and an earthquake comes and a house is destroyed, mm -hmm. or a calamity comes or someone comes and robs it, or if you, if you lose it in a business, it's your loss. What better can it be that for the sake of Allah, the property the kuffar are trying to take, they cannot be any better ajar than that. Mm -hmm. They cannot be any better way that our, our wealth can be utilized. Yeah. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our effort. But uh, we as Dais should keep on continuing striving harder and harder. Yeah. The main thing Allah checks uh, is the striving, the results are in the hands of Allah. So whatever we do, has a means yeah. The result is not in our hands at all, in, a, uh, in our hands is striving. No. So we as Muslims, we as Dai should continue striving irrespective however much the plot. And our Iman should go stronger and it has Alhamdulillah. And mashallah Allah has been very kind that compared to the other Muslims in the world, Allah has yes put us in a much better situation, mashallah. When you look at the Muslims around us, you see that thousands, tens of thousands, millions are in a much worse situation than us. No. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Lay not on us a burden greater than we can bear. And that is the last verse uh, in the Quran of Surah Bakra. And we know that Allah does not lay a burden on us greater than we can bear. And that's the verse of the Quran. So we only pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may He continue accepting effort and may He continue keeping and us in the way where we can try for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Dr. Dakar, subhanallah, 
uh, in the light of the ayah that we quoted earlier, وَأُوذُوا fi sabili. You know, if we just find it so easy that we travel in first class or business class and we're tripping in five-star hotels and we're driven in the... Assalamu alaikum. Oh, alaykum. Oh, this is an entrance to the bank. <laughs> so, not questions himself. You know, what, what is going on? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for 60 miles to <laughs> was beaten up. The Prophet wasn't a terrorist. The Prophet wasn't somebody who was fanatic or extremist. The Prophet ﷺ was, as Allah described in Surah Al-Anbiya, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you, but as mercy for everything that exists. Wallahi, His mercy even to the non-believers. Yet, they received them with the stones. They throw stones at him. They cast stones at him. He bled sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if he, the most beloved to Allah, the dearest, the greatest of all creation, suffer that much, then if you're banned from entering your own country, if your passport is confiscated, if whatever happens, that is very low compared to what happened to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you, do you ever feel in a sorrow or grief? Do you feel like, oh man, what put me in that situation? Why did I have to do that to myself? Do you, do you feel that? There were questions asked by me, by the press and some of the Muslim friends, that Zakir Naik, do you regret doing something that had made you in the situation? I said, Alhamdulillah, if I had a portion of the day, I would have done more dawah than what I did. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And Allah has really blessed us, and I feel I'm one of the most blessed persons that Allah has given us the opportunity to work in His way, and we don't deserve <coughs> it, Alhamdulillah. And I'm just continue studying. You know, Dr. Becker, you, you're a medical doctor by profession. So when a baby, when the fetus is in the womb of his mother or her mother, he's given a source of provision, one source of provision, which is the umbilical cord, right? The baby in the womb of his or her mother, they think that this is the vast universe. They don't see anything beyond it. And they feel that they're safe heaven. But when they come out, Allah provides them with double sources where they get the milk from both breasts. Subhanallah. Fresh, nutritive. And then they think that's it. This is a safe heaven. But at one point, there must be weaning. And then the child will be able to eat and drink from variety of food and drink. And Allah said, Sometimes the person is, is having short sightedness. And he's like, you know, I don't want to say the term like grass eaters. They only look beneath their feet. They think, <laughs> what is the smell the grass? I can't, I can't grass. What is with the grass? I can do something with vegetations, food. <laughs> Just wanted to give uh, that. <laughs> First and uh, re-go again. First, first time. Welcome back. Sorry for the interruption. I think I pressed the uh, uh, cancel uh, bomb by mistake. Grass. It was all your fault, <laughs> Sheikh Hassan. <laughs> we keep talking about the grass. <laughs> so we just wanted to greet uh, uh, Sheikh Jam'an. Yeah, marhaba. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to uh, this nice gathering. Nice you are welcome in KLA. KLA? KLA. What do you want to do? Okay. Uh, SubhanAllah. Sorry for the interruption. So we're talking about these sacrifices that Ada'i would eventually have to offer for Allah's sake. The thing is, whenever 
uh, you know, one of us go through some struggle, like if you're held at any airport for five hours, six hours, or even 12 hours, and then you're asked to uh, take a hike, get back to where you come from. Oh, but I've been flying for the past 24 hours, and uh, I'm here to give a lecture now. You know, we're not interested. So how do we actually feel about it? Do we feel like, you know, very bitter taste? Do we feel like we're oppressed? Or do we feel, well, I have made an attempt, I've tried, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَن لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى وَأَنَّ سَعِيهُ سَمْحَيْرًا We're fully asked to make an effort, to strike. Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to be telling that earlier, I had always to strike. And then Allah said, I'm correcting him on the factory. I was always to tell the message, giving it that and then Allah said. No. So we as Dayi should do our best striving in the way of Allah. That's what the Quran is. So now leave the result for Allah. No. And that's what we pray to Allah that maybe continue striving until our last breath. And maybe try and spread the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala last breath. And may uh, Iman increase. No. And as I believe that uh, the more uh, more difficult is the test, higher the reward. And as the Prophet said, that all the Ambiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their test was the hardest. Compared to that, we are nothing. Yeah. So we pray to Allah that, but we say that lay not on another burden. We say so the test is higher, and and if Allah makes us pass, inshallah, we expect a higher order. Wait a minute. So you mean that if you're tested, this is not necessarily a sign that Allah is punishing you. Allah isn't happy with you. Rather, it could mean the opposite. In the light of the hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ashadu nasi bala an al anbiya." The most severely tested people are the prophets. So he loved them, he tested them more than others. Yeah. Allah clearly says in the Quran that no one can go to Jannah without the test. Mm. The question is when a calamity comes on someone, it can be because of two reasons. Mm. One can be that he's on the wrong path and Allah is giving azab, or it can be he's on the right path and Allah is testing him and giving him a higher test so that he gives him a higher reward. Jannah may be Jannah for those. Mm. So any calamity is because of two reasons. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever difficulty we are, we are facing in life is because of the second category. But okay. Allah thinks that He wants to give us a better reward, He is putting us in a bigger test, and maybe pass it to You know, you just brought it to yourself. You opened up another serious question, which is, I believe on behalf of all the viewers, and once again, I, I do apologize for finishing the previous live broadcast accidentally. I hope the viewers will still catch up with us, inshallah. So on behalf of all the viewers, I would ask this question. And how would you figure out or distinguish whether the test or the calamity is a matter of test or a means of punishment? If we are on the path of Quran and Sunnah, that we are following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not breaking law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, following the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, rest assured we are on the street. Irrespective of the calamity. If we are breaking the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are not following the Quran, we are doing all the harams or the habira, then even if you are getting a benefit and a pleasure in the world, you think it is the azab actually. Mm. Even you may be staying in a palace, you may be the richest man in the world, and you are breaking the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be assured that this is azab for you. Mm. Allah says Allah tests the people with wealth, mm. with children, by all the latest. Mm. So if a calamity befalls on you, you should you should always analyze that is your life according to Quran. Mm. If it is, rest assured, whatever the word says, mm. you're on the straight path. So if it is not, then that is called istidraj. As Allah said in the Quran, min la So He may give extra and gives respite, He gives wealth, health, and plenty of authority. So people who are indulged into even major sins, this is not a sign that Allah is happy with them. It's, it's, it's a matter of istidraj, it's really, really dangerous. You know, Dr. Zakir, um, again, uh, as a doctor by profession, as an MD, normally and through our experience, and this is something that is very uh, observed and not noticeable, which is uh, a successful engineer wants his sons or his children to be engineers like him so that they would inherit the office and the, the business and obviously a doctor would like his children to be all doctors a dentist likewise a lawyer likewise but why would a da'iyah a caller to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
Sheikh Asim, prepare yourself. I'm going to ask you a question. What is the difference between a da'i and a da'iya? Okay? It has nothing to do with masculine and feminine. <laughs> Not everything we talk about is muscles, Sheikh Asim, okay? <laughs> so, um, why would a da'i, who has been through Allah, has been stopped at the airports, has been banned from giving talks, stopping from giving lectures, he's, maybe his assets are being frozen. Uh, you know, some agencies are trying to assassinate his personality, discredit his credibility. Why would any person on earth, after going through this lot of hassle, would still desire and pray day and night to have not one of his children, not only the boys, rather all his children to be in the same field of da'wah? Please enlighten us. I do agree with you that most of the people have you said that the engineer would like his son to be an engineer or a daughter to be an engineer, a doctor would like the uh, son to be a doctor, a businessman, and the son to be a businessman, but I'm not agreeing that this is always right. Mm. Uh, I was a doctor mm. and I became a doctor, I chose the profession to me, it was a good profession, so the humanity, and I found a better profession as Allah says in the Quran, it's a facility chapter 40 in the Unless the woman asks him to call a member boy or what the woman is called, who is better in speech than when we invite to the way of their Lord? What's righteousness? Say that I'm Muslim. Mm. When I found a better profession, I gave up the profession of becoming a doctor. <laughs> yes, my parents wanted me to become a doctor. Like You're a doctor. Medical, medical doctor. No, no, the besides medical. being a medical so doctor, doctor, you're a heart doctor. <laughs> A pathologist in a sense of truth in the hearts. Um, you can say I'm a doctor, I've changed from a doctor of body to doctor of a soul. Mm -hmm. That's lovely. Beautiful. Mashallah. So then, uh, then you realize, I remember my mother, you know, she wanted me to become uh, like a heart specialist, like Chris Banner. Mm -hmm. Chris Banner was the first uh, doctor in the world, heart specialist, put in the heart. So heart she wanted you to be a pathologist? Yes, she wanted me to come out like Chris Banner, who was from South mm -hmm. So when I met Sheikh Ahmed Dilad and I got involved in the field of Dawah, then I asked her, and I started my Dawah. So would you want to become a doctor, or like Prince Banner, or like Sheikh Dita? Mm. So she's being intelligent, she said both. <laughs> <laughs> well, why is she really intelligent? <laughs> Later on, when we got into the field and became a full-time guy after a few years after, then would you want me to become like Sheikh Dita or like Prince Banner? She said I can sacrifice a thousand Prince Banner for myself. Allah, of course, mashallah. So she realized that it's a better profession. Mashallah. And coming back to your question that, uh, after getting so much of trials and tribulations and difficulties in life, would you want your one of your children to become a yeah. I would say I would want 100%. All my children. Allah 100%. Allah. Allah. Because whenever there are trials and tribulations and we look into your life that you're on correct Quran and Sunnah, that means Alhamdulillah, Allah is accepting your work. Don't look at the results. You have to look at them on the Quran and Sunnah. And when trials and tribulations are coming, Allah wants to give you a higher. Mm. And I would want my children to get higher reward than me. Mm. That's the reason we don't only do dua that may have children who can die. Despite all the struggle, despite all the obstacles and the harassment and the personality assassination. So, you know, normally a person would like for his children to be better than him, not to go through the hassle. And we know in advance that if you were to give da'wah, then you gotta face those challenges. So despite all of that, you still wanted them to be uh, dua. For example, if you take an examination, you look at an examination, when you just study for the examination a few hours or a few days before you are studying, it's a difficult time, but the moment you pass, then you get a degree, maybe a bachelor of arts or science. More difficult the test, higher the reward. Mm -hmm. When you apply, when you appear for a medical examination, which is one of the most difficult, in the academic examination. Mm. Once you pass, you get a doctor. Mm. In front of you, you get more. Respect. But before the examination, it is more difficult, bigger test, and you fear that you may fail. So there is a price for a price. So similarly, higher the test, greater the reward. So I don't only pray that my children can die. I do pray, but I also pray that may they become mujaddid. Mujaddid. You know, after the Prophet, Allah there's Allah. no Prophet that will come yeah. next to the Jazdi. Then we pray that may our children become Shaykh of Islam. 